Hey everybody, Greg Barron, Professor of Real Estate. We're going to continue with this personal journey of questions that I've got coming from a lot of you out there in the audience. First one today is, what type of projects have you done in your career? Well, it just so happens that uh, as far as asset classes goes, we've done just about all of it. We've done office, we've done retail, we've done senior living, skilled nursing, uh, we've done multifamily, we've done special use, uh, we've done land development. So over the past 40 years, you know, our companies have been involved in just about everything that you could imagine. People ask me all the time, what, what makes you successful? And I say, well, probably because I have failed miserably at so many things in my life. I've become an expert at things, not by the glory days, but from the times that we've been in these projects, which has really twisted us into having to come up with positive solutions. Not all have been great. I mean, let's face it, in 40 years, I've been through many recessions, uh, been close to bankruptcy a couple of times, like other people that were in our space. But thank God we've um, we've continued to be here today and and thriving as I, as I sit here. The next question I have is, what type of assets do you like best moving forward? Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time on the channel evaluating uh, special assets, uh, different asset classes. I have a historical perspective of, of really trying to determine where we want to be placed moving forward. We've talked about the timing of real estate, which quadrant that, uh, that you're in. And by the way, if you haven't looked at my video on timing of real estate, it's probably one of the best ones that I have put together about being in a recessionary, a hyper supply or growth period and when you should pop into the market. I firmly believe that moving forward to answer the question, what type of asset class do I like? I'm really big on multifamily right now. Um, I really don't want to move into the office because I don't know where that's totally going to shake out with the work from home. Uh, I mean, even right now, our company is looking at moving. We've been in our location now for over 25 years. We de developed a, a series of offices where we are, been there a long time, and now taking advantage of the dip in the office market since I've sold off on all of those. And and I got to say that that the, the the rates and the structure and the terms are very favorable for us that want to move into the office market. But from, from an investment perspective, the asset class that we're most centered on and focused on is multifamily. Uh, for all the reasons that every other talking head out there is, is saying, number one, we still have the migration into positive areas that are going to uh, have people move into specific areas. You've got a, a tremendous amount of headwinds for those that want to get into their first house. Construction costs have not abated, as I well know, because we're deeply involved in the commercial construction space as well. And we just haven't seen the softness in the construction prices go down. So therefore, you haven't seen any great movement on the cost of housing, and affordability is still one of the biggest issues that we're facing in America today. All of that put together means that we still have, we, and we will have a strong demand for multifamily. You know, the cap rates have got to come down a little bit. The, the OPEX have got to settle down a little bit. And frankly, we've got people kicking the cans down the road that are going into the gutter, like I mentioned before, and there's going to be some significant opportunities. Now, there's going to be a lot of players out there as well, but you're just going to have to dig deep to, to find those gems. That's where we're going to be mostly focused on in the future along with self-storage because self-storage goes along with the migratory flow of people that are going into multifamily. It aligns with it. They need supplemental space to store their space. It's a, it's a low operational uh, um, expense kind of business. So we like those two asset classes and we will continue to try to uncover some of those opportunities as the months and the next couple of years go by. So specific to multifamily, a lot of you are, are thinking out there, well, that's great for you because you have the ability to do the, the multiple doors, but this can be uh, uh, anywhere from a fiveplex and, and 
by five plex, anything more than a four plex is considered multi. And that's the way that I kind of signify the asset class. You can start with a, a five plex on up. You can start with a, a B plus grade and start to build your portfolio. You can do a value add on it. So you don't have to be necessarily in my space. What I'm talking about is multifamily as a full asset class inclusive of the smaller door units that, that uh, are out there that are going to be uh, coming on the market in the months in the co next couple of years to come. So we're really strong on multifamily. Um, it's not been what we've done in the past as much, uh, primarily because our skill set has been in the other asset classes. From a construction standpoint on a value add, it's a little harder control than say a office warehouse or a flex space that we would do, or even a multi-tenant uh, medical building that we've done in the past. Uh, what you'll find is in multifamily, the costs are a little bit harder control. So you'll have to be a little bit more diligent in a multifamily value add, but it can be done. So as far as the asset class, I would say multifamily first, self-storage second. That's where we're going to spend most of our time in in the future. As a follow-up question, I had somebody ask me, do you think bank covenant terms and rates are going to significantly shift in the near future? I would say no. I think the 50 basis points is all we're going to get right now. We might have another 25 to 50 in December. It's not going to make a significant difference on uh, penciling out a deal. Um, you are going to have a lot of, of those deals that will look better. But today, SOFR is at 4.83. The Fed fund rate is right at 4.3 as well. But Prime is still you know, 300 basis points over that. Um, it's going to take another year, well into 26, before the rates get down to what we would call uh, the normal rates, but what is normal anymore? What we're going to see is continued stress on these markets. We're going to see continued keys being thrown back at the banks, the banks wanting to get it off the real estate owned. Uh, some of the bigger institutional ones are going to be ready to, to uh, scoop them up. So there's, there's going to be some deals in the future, but as far as bank terms and covenants, you're not going to see a real softness, in my opinion, of bank terms and covenants to loans, at least for another 12 to 18 months. As a matter of fact, the banks have got a lot of headwinds because they've got a lot of real estate on their books right now that frankly aren't marked to market. Um, there's going to be some headwinds for some regionals coming up, which means there's going to be some opportunities for us in the next 6 to 12, 18 months, maybe 24 months. So self-storage, multifamily, don't look for rates to be just off the charts low and still consider the banks to have some pretty tight terms. Their loan to cost is still relatively going to be low, meaning they're still going to be looking at 50 to 60% loan to cost so in summary, don't look for a tremendous softening of rates or terms. Learn how to deal with the market the way it's being presented to you and come up with solutions to start to build your portfolio. Thanks again for joining me on this little personal journey. Always remember, educate, evaluate so that you can ultimately execute to increase your own personal wealth. We'll see you soon.